This week on episode 107 of the Odd Dad Out podcast, the live stream for The Cure is over and I will talk about it for the absolute last little time before next year. I've got a small little sidebar about my son and coffee. And this week, I kind of came to the realization that I don't really want to be rich. The news brings some questionable headlines, an irritable barber, and an absent-minded astronaut. And at long last, the time has come for this week's recommended listening feature, Who's Right with Doug and Anthony. Beginning on that old podcast in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Odd Dad Out Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. If you are new to the show, thank you very much. I am your host, as always, Adam Higgins, the Odd Dad Out. And on this show, I chat about whatever's going on in my head. Maybe some rants, maybe some little philosophical doodads or whatnot, I don't know. I make fun of some weird news stories, and I tell you about a podcast that I think you should be checking out. So, like I said, the live stream for The Cure was this last weekend. Chances are, if you listen to me, you probably were tuning in, or the kind of person that would tune in, or very well possibly the kind of person that was part of it. So, let's get that out of the way, because I, I have talked about this event for long enough, but... The live stream for The Cure this year managed to actually, they, between pre-sale of merch and early donations, and then live donations during the stream, they managed to raise over $5,500 in donations during the stream, which was also matched by the Cancer Research Institute for a grand total of over $11,000 which technically you can still donate through the end of May to contribute to that total. And if you are the kind of person who just wants to see that go up again, sure, go ahead. Go to livestreamforthecure.com and you can still donate to that. That's just, that's really awesome. Because last year they raised about $1,200 on stream when with the uh, Institute match it got to about twenty five hundred, which is where the five thousand dollar goal this year came from. They wanted to raise five thousand to double last year's, which really was like quadrupling last year's. Well, they beat that twelve hundred dollars in the first few hours, so it was it was really awesome to see that you know they really they they just smashed it. It was really awesome. Next goal for next year: seventy two hours nonstop with a twenty thousand dollar goal. All right, so he's just saying by next year's event, he's going to die. So there's that. <laughs> Enough, but like I said, I just wanted to kind of give you the numbers because it was it was really awesome. It was a really fun to be a part of it. Everybody did so awesome. I, you know, watching all my friends that were up there doing their thing. It was really great. And it was just a fun thing to be part of. But... Before I get into my little kind of epiphany for this week, I have to, well, take a coffee break. Coffee break! So, <laughs> my youngest son, Sam, is about two, two and a half. And, well, it goes without saying that I drink a lot of coffee. Well, I, I, it doesn't go without saying. I've said it here a lot. And if you follow me on social media, or if you just know me as a person, you know I, I go through about two pots of coffee a day. That's just me. Well, Sam, A, thoroughly encourages it. If I haven't made coffee yet for the day, Daddy, make coffee. Daddy, make your coffee. He's always. And then, but the thing is, anytime I set my coffee cup down, he takes it. And I will openly admit, I was drinking coffee when I was about three years old. I was his age drinking coffee. Not an exaggeration, not a lie. But I do find it funny that him, of all people, I guess it doesn't really matter which of my kids, but that any of my kids are actually, at his age, is already such a coffee fiend. 
I literally cannot put my coffee cup down with any liquid in it without him stealing it. And and it gets quite annoying. And even today, I think I said, I was like, all right, forget it. I was like, if I put it on the counter, he'll get to it. If I put it like up high on a, on a, like a, like up on the top of the carrier or push it further back on the shelf, he'll go push a chair and climb up and reach it. He'll climb onto the counter. Whatever he's got to do to steal my coffee, he will do. Today, I was like, all right, fine. I'll stick it in the microwave. It, he can't get into the microwave because it's a, it's a stiff button to push. He's two. He can't push that hard. Fine. No biggie. I go to the bathroom. Come back. What do I have? Bug standing there. Dad, Sam's drinking your coffee. Fuck, seriously, I haven't been gone long enough for me to drink my coffee yet. And he's already gotten into the microwave, stolen it, drank my coffee. And he's standing there in the middle of the kitchen, holding my completely empty coffee mug, which was about a quarter full, by the way. And I've got a big mug. I've got a 15-ounce coffee mug. Because on show days, I use my my odd dad out mug because I'm cheesy that way. What can I say? But he's standing there in the middle of the of the kitchen, holding my coffee mug. Thing is completely bone dry. He's just uh, staring at me. I didn't do it. I, yes, you did. You drank all my coffee. No, I didn't. You're holding my cup. I didn't do it. <laughs> and this scenario has played over so many times. I cannot leave a coffee cup alone. If I... You know, lay down, like I've, if it's time for me to take a nap and I have had just had my coffee and it's sitting on the table next to me, I will wake up to him standing there drinking my coffee. Uh, can't just have a cup of coffee to myself. Jesus. Uh, I just thought that would be a funny bit to share because, yeah, I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a well established coffee hound, but the fact that my two year old, my two year old like Joneses for it, man. I don't get twitchy about it. He will snake my coffee whenever he can. And it's not like I gave it to him or anything. I didn't inspire it other than I think like normal inspiration. He sees daddy drinks all this coffee. So coffee must be great. So I'm going to drink the great coffee. That's that's it. And my coffee is great. So I totally understand why he would steal it. But I don't see the original inspiration other than I want to be like daddy. Which is sweet. But stay the fuck away from my coffee. Okay, coffee break over. On to my odd epiphany for the week. So, there's a guy at work. There's there's only so many people that I can have, like, more complex discussions with. Most of the time, if I'm talking to the guys at work, we're talking... They're car guys or, or things like that. So we'll, we'll talk about, you know, YouTube videos. Or we'll end up talking about, you know, what's going on with the royal wedding. It was like, I understand the dynamics of things a little better than they do. And I'm explaining, you know stuff you know and they're they're not guys that i have philosophical conversations or like really deep uh discussions or disagreements or or debates or whatever with it's just not there and um, not that they're not i'm not saying they're dumb i'm saying that they're just not the kind of people that tip like you're not going to have these big complex debates they're simple people who have who like they don't care about the big stupid complex crap that runs around in my head. Well, a guy that uh, recently came back to work with us, we were having a lively debate one evening, uh, basically involving the show actually, and me talking about how I have a desire to you know start a business in podcast editing, and this was before I kind of even started looking at the voiceover stuff. But I, we kind of, and he, he basically really started aggressively asserting that I should be trying to, uh, grow the show for the purpose of making money from it. And that, the that this show should be a source of revenue. And I don't. <laughs> do I would I like a bigger audience? Yes, every podcaster wants a bigger audience. But I have zero interest in monetizing this show 
unless somebody just outright offered it. I am not seeking out money for this show. Now, if you wanted to offer me money, if you were an awesome person and you wanted to give me money or something because you enjoy the show, I have a Patreon set up. There is a link at odddadoutpodcast.com for that. Or you could just go to patreon.com slash odddadout because it's about the same amount of, of typing. But that's that's a whole other thing. And that is much more, hey, if you like the show and you dig the show and you feel like you know kicking me a couple of bucks, go for it. I'm not, and you, I almost never mention it. The thing exists, but I almost never mention it. I mean, you could, I, I have rewards and stuff set up for it. It's like, yeah, there's incentives for doing it, but really it's, it's just there to be there for maybe, Hey, if there are people who want to donate, give them an avenue. Well, you know, we, we got into a quite aggravated discussion back and forth. And he could not wrap his head around the idea that, like, he he's very much the kind of person who sees financial success as self-improvement. That when you, you know, start a business and you, you create a successful business and you make a million dollars, that that is, you know, you're, you're bettering yourself by doing that. I personally don't give a shit about being rich. And it was very, like, it wasn't even the discussion with him. I guess the discussion with him kind of sparked the the thought process of how to explain uh, my thought, my feelings about the situation. It basically, you know, started me thinking about it. And I came to the realization that I just don't care to be rich. I mean, a lot of people do. And a lot of people have this ultimate goal of, I want to be rich. I want to be you know, I want to be famous, especially, you know, like I'm a podcaster. I'm an entertainer by nature of what you are listening to right now. I'm an entertainer and I also am aspiring to become a voiceover actor. Again, entertainer. I am, I am working in a, a field in, in attempting to work in multiple industries of entertainment Yet I do not seek fame and I do not seek fortune. At which point I'm sure all of you are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like, well, then what are you doing this for? Honestly, and I've said it before, I enjoy doing this. I enjoy sitting down behind the mic and talking. I enjoy getting to share my stupid stories and, and make fun of everything I do on the show. I do it entirely because I love doing it. For my own personal entertainment and enjoyment of sharing the things with you. I enjoy telling my stories. I enjoy making fun of new stuff because I'm a snarky, uh, cynical asshole. And I enjoy sharing the things that I enjoy. All the podcasts I listen to, all of those things. I enjoy sharing those things. I feel like if I like it, there are other people that might like it too. So I want to introduce that to them. That's why I do this. Would I like more people to be able to get my message and hear my stupid stories and, and get the podcast recommendations that I provide? Absolutely. Would it be awesome if somebody wanted to pay me for that? Sure. But I honestly don't want to be rich. I, you know, my wife literally wants a castle. My wife literally would like to buy a castle in Wales and she's insistent on it being Wales. My wife wants a castle in Wales where we can, you know, have every animal she's ever wanted in an actual fucking moat because it's a castle. You have to have a moat because cartoons. And this is, you know, this is the goal that my wife has. She, not saying she's materialistic, but we, we we're very different in our, our uh, reactions to life. We both grew up poor. We both grew up under very, you know, financially stressed, um, households. And the difference is she grew up in the, I didn't have anything now that I'm older and I'm an adult. I would like to, I would like to have everything, all of the things that I couldn't have because as a kid, we were so poor. I want those things. Now I want to have the giant 
uh, flashy house and all of the toys and all of the animals and all of the, the fancy cars. I want all of that because I never could have those things when I was a child. Whereas when I was a kid, we were poor and very much in the same situation that I'm in with my wife. Now, my dad worked at night. My mom worked during the day. Dad was home with us, you know, young with the younger kids during the day while the older kids went to school. And slowly, you know, as the kids grew up and they started going to school. But, you know, it's very little interaction between, you know, mom and dad in transition between shifts and whatnot. But, you know, there were six kids. We had a house. We had a household of eight. We had a very large house because there were eight people in the house. But, you know, I, I'm, I grew up going, trying, you know, with a very humble mindset. You know, we lived very simple means. You know, it wasn't like a, you know, we're, we're dirt poor and we don't have food and we're not, we're, you know, we're eating beans and rice every day. Because we can't afford anything else. We weren't, you know, eating ramen for dinner every other day and blah, blah. It's like, no, we, you know, did we have beans and rice? Yes. Why? Because it's a Mexican family. We had beans and rice on a regular basis. Why? Because Mexicans. But it wasn't, you know, out of financial hardship. I mean, there were points where, yeah, we were broke and like, what are we having? Beans. Why? Because we don't have anything else today. I get paid tomorrow. We're going shopping. Whatever. That happens. But, you know, we knew every week. We were going out to eat on payday. Like, oh yeah, it's going to be pizza night. We're going to go get burgers. We're going to, you know, things like that. But we lived humbly, you know, drove used cars, you know, didn't do any, we didn't do anything flashy. And, you know, we had a nice house. We took care of it, had gorgeous gardens, you know, um, we we entertained ourselves in by humble means and i grew up you know to have that sort of humble mentality and sort of i don't need the money and the 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 flash and all those things that's how i grew up and i still you know ha- sort of have those values even though it's like yes i am a guy who likes electronics and loves you know fancy doodads and and toys and you know yes i want to have 10 microphones and a new computer and and all of these flashy things and, and, and i like toys i like stuff to play with but i honestly i don't need them i'm not freaking out i don't have to have a man cave i don't need to have all of this crazy i don't I don't need to be rich. I don't need a flashy house. I'm perfectly content having an unassuming house. Now, I could take a small little house, you know, just enough bedrooms for everybody. Now, I will say I probably need a separate bedroom office space just for me for this and for hopefully eventual like career and voiceover. Hopefully. Here's crossing my fingers. But I, you know, I... I don't need the giant house. I don't need the the grand entryway and the cathedral ceilings and 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 the travertine tile all throughout the. No, I don't need any of that. I don't need four cars in the driveway. I don't need I don't need cars that you can't pronounce the name. You know, I'm perfectly content driving my Chevy van. In all likelihood, after that thing dies, we're going to get a Nissan van. You know, we may end up getting, uh, you know, a, a big ass SUV because we have four kids. You know, I, I don't need any of, if it's not practical, I don't put any priority on it. It's like, I need a big vehicle. Why? I've got four kids. I need a vehicle big enough to carry them. I need a house big enough to contain all of my children. I need to be able to feed all of them. About it. That is really it. And that is, that's my necessities. And, you know, as long as I've got, I just need enough money to pay my bills, take care, you know, feed my family and basically, and maybe a little bit left to go on vacation once a year, you know, go to the movies, buy, you know, buy the kids a new toy, something like that. That's, not 
I don't want to be wanting for anything, but I don't need to have throw away money. You know, I don't need, I don't want to be, I don't desire. Now, again, I'm not saying if, if, you know, somebody by whatever means I came into a lot of money and I suddenly became very rich and very wealthy and I became very successful and made a shit ton of money and all this. And suddenly I'm making a million dollars a year and I live in a fucking castle because my wife wanted a castle. Fine, I'll take it. But I don't seek it out. It's not a goal for me. And so it's, and it's, it, it's kind of a twisted thing. <laughs> it, it, it's a very strange thing, but I'm, I'm perfectly content with living with enough to comfortably take care of my family. And that's all I need. That is really the, ultimately that's the, the, my philosophy on that is that if I don't need it, I don't need it. Uh, sorry, I'm getting all philosophical and shit. And, and <laughs> But again, this whole part of the show in a very general way is the, you know, let's crack open the, the, the door to my psyche or whatever. <laughs> but let's get on to having some stupid fun. I'm going to take podcast promo break and I'll be right back with Mike Jolitz on the surprise motherfucker news desk. Hi, I'm Erica. And I'm Billy. Host of Martinis in the Macabre, the podcast that covers all things murder, mystery, and mayhem. With some alcohol and dark humor thrown in for good measure. We'd like to invite you to the Martinis in the Macabre cocktail hour, where we'll delight you with the soothing sounds of gruesome murders. Mysterious disappearances. The paranormal. Dark folklore. And many more. Act now and we'll throw in dancing plagues for free. (laughs) Yes, you heard that right. Dancing plagues. So check out Martinis in the Macabre, available on most podcast apps, and always at martinisinthemacabre.com. Welcome to Film Roast. Hey everyone, Hannah here, the co-host of Film Roast, where two over-caffeinated and underqualified friends talk about all things movies. If you like film factoids, lots of sarcasm, and bad impressions, check us out on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. You can also follow us on Twitter at Film Roast Show and like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash film roast. Happy roasting. All right. Thank you, Adam. Welcome all of you odd dad outers. Is that a thing? It is now time for the headlines. The Phoenix Suns got the number one overall draft pick in the NBA draft this current last time. Who, uh, man, man, whatever. Who gives a fuck? It's still gonna suck. (laughs) Fact. Deadpool 2 opened last Friday. I so want to see that. That movie is going to make a shit ton of money. Well, you can't take your emotional peacock on American Airlines anymore. Shit. Pet Llama's okay. Chris the Mole Man wet his panties when he saw a Sidewinder on the porch at his mom's house. (laughs) Screamed like a girl. Heard him all the way from Buckeye in surprise. Yeah. The Golden Knights advanced to the NHL Finals. Boom! Way to go. (coughs) All right, so now it is time for the news. (laughs) A deranged woman dropped a deuce and flung her poo at an employee (laughs) at a Tim Hortons in Canada. Was it a commentary on the quality of food? Why was she so butthurt? <laughs> For all of you that were wondering, Henry finally made it to level 30 on Pokemon Go. And yes, we partied so hard. One person got alcohol poisoning. <laughs> Last Saturday, Meghan Markle married Prince Harry. Oh, fuck, who cares? I'm not British. <laughs> Justify won the Preakness Stakes and is one win away from the Triple Crown. Yeah. Yippee skippy. So don't care. <laughs> Johnny Manziel is going to Canada to play football for the CFL. Meh, meh. Hey, Colin Kaepernick still doesn't have a job. <laughs> wait, wait. Is Johnny Manziel better than Colin Kaepernick? 
Hmm. The Billboard Music Awards were on Sunday night. I missed it. So glad I got to work. I wasn't forced to watch that shit. I did hear the big winner was, I don't fucking care. And finally, in the news, President Trump misspelled his wife's name in a tweet last weekend. He has since deleted that tweet and retweeted again, but called her wife number three instead. Alrighty, guys. Well, that does it for the news from the Surprise M Effer Desk. I am Mike Jolitz. Hope you guys have a great week. And don't forget to check out my new show called The Big Big Show. It's taken the place of the former Mike Jolitz show, which you will now see occasionally under the Mole Man banner. So, anyway. Yeah. Tschüss, ciao, and auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Thank you for that, Mike. You can catch Mike Jolitz along with Chris the Mole Man and myself over at SurpriseMFR.com. Moving into the rest of the news, I've got a few of them. <laughs> We're going to try and get through them pretty quick today because, uh, long story short, I, I just don't have a lot of time. <laughs> so... And this one just, I, I didn't even read the story. It didn't even matter because the headline was all that I cared about. Launching a crypto scam? Here's what not to do. Don't start a crypto scam. That's what not to do. That's, that's it. You can sum the entire thing up. I don't even, I didn't even read the article. Don't start a crypto scam. <laughs> And all right, next, all right, eggs start hatching in the back of a truck. So there's a video going viral and so and social media in China that appears to show a truck full of egg cartons hatching and baby chicks popping out. And honestly, I I don't know how I how do I feel about this. Not from a oh man, that's so terrible. I almost feel like it might be fake. Because, I mean, I don't understand why fertilized eggs that would be potentially that close to being, to hatching, would be being transferred in the back of a pickup truck. And I realize, yes, it's China and, you know, pro procedures and things and, and things, it's, it's different. But that's literally like a pickup truck with just stacks of egg cartons, like just like the cardboard egg carton racks, kind of like when you buy the big box of eggs, just the flat egg cartons just stacked in the back of this truck. And then you just start seeing like baby chicks and they like they're hatching. And to me, this just doesn't make any sense because you, I, I really don't I, and even like a, oh it's China and I don't want to disparage China but I don't think they'd be transporting un, or fertilized about ready to hatch chicks in the back of a pickup truck like that really don't I, I don't know maybe I'm giving China too much credit I don't know but I just don't think they would that situation would occur sorry all right Moving on. Got to I got to get through them to this week. <laughs> uh, man thrown through window over a bad haircut. A New York man was not happy with his haircut, and after he complained about it to the barber and threatened not to pay for it, the barber pushed the man through the shop's front window. What's funny is that when they asked the the other barbers in the shop like who is he? Where would he go? Blah, blah, blah. Like, everyone's like, we don't know his name. We don't know where it's like, I, I don't know how barber shops work in New York, but I, I'm, even if it's like a, oh yeah, you'd like, like a salon would be, you know, out here where you've got like a, you know, somebody rents a space. Like, yeah, they rent the chair, they rent this space. You know, the people who are working in the shop with you, even if you don't know them well. You know, so I, I question this. I mean, that dude just you know, shoved the guy. He goes full force through the window, you know, busts the window out. And then the barber takes off. They treat the, the, the haircut guy with, you know, for med, you know, dude went through a window. So he gets, you know, medical treatment and all that. 
But the fact that everybody basically played dumb because they had to be playing dumb. There's no way nobody in there knew the guy's name. Nobody knew him. I was like, oh, we don't know who he is. Bullshit. <laughs> Dude's working in the chair next to you. You know who the fuck he is. You know his name at least. Something. I'm like, oh, who's over in chair three? Oh, that's Darnell. You know it's fucking some, you know his name. So don't fucking lie. Just because, I'm sorry, if the cops are trying to investigate, that asshole just shoved somebody through a window. And they even said, it's like, yeah, man, I don't know what he's talking about, what he's, you know, freaking out. If the guy wasn't happy, you just fix it. Like, I'd have fixed it for free. <laughs> that, I think that's just marketing. He was like, oh, man, he fucked up your head, man. Come over here. Sit down. I'll fix your hair for free. Whatever. But, yeah, what the fuck, people? That dude's got some anger problems. Okay. Moving on. Mom renames her son after her tattoo is misspelled. So a Swedish mother went to get her son's name, Kevin, tattooed on her arm. She actually, basically she had a spot where she was having all of her kids' names basically tattooed together. Unfortunately, the tattoo artist misspelled his name and wrote Kelvin instead. Rather than getting the tattoo, the tattoo fixed or removed, she just decided to change his name. Because, well, tattoo removal is expensive. And the tattoo artist who was, you know, according to the article, just my interpretation, kind of dick, he's like, well, there's nothing I can do about it now. Uh, do you want your money back? <laughs> asshole, you're going to find a way to fucking fix this. I mean, like, honestly, I'd say, dude, you're going to pay for the fucking tattoo removal, you son of a bitch. You fucked up my tattoo. You can't spell Kevin. Asshole. So, yeah. That's fucked. And she was like, I mean, and anybody who's looked into it, tattoo removal is fucking expensive. So, it was thousands of dollars to get the tattoo removed. Or spend a few hundred bucks, go down to the records office, and have her son's name changed. And he was two. So, it, it, it wasn't a big change. And he's gotten used to it. So, ultimately, at least in the case of the, the correction, no harm, no foul. But fuck that tattoo artist. That guy was an asshat. That's like, that's like Tattoo Nightmare 101. That is the biggest, like worst tattoo nightmare you ever have is that you're getting words and they misspell it or you're getting like how many times you see so some, somebody's getting something in chinese lettering or something like that and it means jack shit it's like oh it means generosity it's like it means whore <laughs> something like that like i thought it meant this no <laughs> never ever <laughs> if you can't read it don't get it don't get words. Don't get names. I don't care. I don't even have my kids' names. My one tattoo is my big Dr. Seuss quote. And again, giant tattoo, big Dr. Seuss quote. But I don't have my kids' names. My wife has a totem pole representing our kids with like symbols for each of our kids. We don't have any names. Why? Names get misspelled. Then the next thing you know, you had to rename your kid Kelvin. I mean, again, the kids, you know, no harm for the kid, but kind of sucks. Which brings me to dun, 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 everybody's favorite. And I said it last week that it was kind of tame and it didn't turn out to be. This week, it's going to have to be the absolutely most tame jackass of the week. You know what? I'm not even going to call this a jackass of the week. This is just kind of a oops bonehead of the week. Because I can't even totally blame the guy. Astronaut forgets to load an SD card before going on spacewalk. <laughs> yep. So while preparing to film a spacewalk, astronaut on the International Space Station noticed that his GoPro said no SD. So after you know, rem was a remote calling, whatever, uh, NASA for clarification... It was discovered that they simply forgot to load it onto the camera before launch. So the SD card is at NASA on Earth while he's up in space doing a spacewalk with a GoPro that can't record shit. 
granted they have cameras outside and everything and, and you know th- this entire interaction was captured as part of their like nasa spacewalk live stream shit that they do but it was like it's not even a i'm not even jackass worthy it's just kind of a bonehead thing like fuck <laughs> you know it's it's the i'm sure if they weren't aware they were being recorded that's it and that just kind of sucks for him. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm, you know, I'm going to be able to record me doing a spacewalk. This is real cool. I don't even, I don't care how many times you've done it. Being an astronaut and doing spacewalks and shit outside. Like you get to walk around in space. That's cool. I would record every one of them too. And I'm sure they record them for, you know, scientific reasons. And oh, we have to document everything about, you know, every screw you turn, you know, has to be documented, all that. But it's still cool and it still sucks that something as simple as an SD card, you know, and, and I'm sure they can't just, and I'm, I'm sure there's more cameras inside and I'm sure there's SD cards inside the space station, but the amount of hassle it's got to be to get from outside in space to inside the space station, can't, it, it's probably not a, you know, knock, knock, who's there? You know, let me in. I forgot. I'm like, hey, I need an SD card for the camera. All right, here you go. It can't be that simple. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> you know, it's definitely going to be more more work. And so he doesn't get to film his spacewalk, at least that one. But again, more of just kind of a bonehead of the week, I think. So I'm going to take one more quick promo break. And when I come back, I'm talking about this week's recommended listening feature, the Who's Right podcast. Hey everyone, this is Toph, host of Gravity Beard, a podcast featuring interviews and discussions on a wide range of topics. In each episode, I'll either interview a special guest or we'll convene our typical Algonquin roundtable of brilliant minds. Occasionally, we'll even be joined by the host of one of your other favorite podcasts. Then every other week, my buddy Adam stops by for an installment of This Week Today. Whatever we do each week, we promise you'll be entertained. You can find Gravity Beard on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else quality podcasts are sold. And you can always find us and other indie pods in the Underdog Podcast community on Facebook. We're also a member of the Podfix Network. Come check us out. Gravity Beard. It's what your ears will want to be listening to. Hey, this is Adam Nutter. And this is Greg Trout. Come check out our podcast, Nerds with Words. Adam and I talk about pop culture, comedy, comic books, movies, conspiracies. We're both comedians and we might make you laugh. Every week we welcome a guest from the entire spectrum of pop culture and science and comedy. You can follow us on Twitter at Nerds with Words 1. Recommended listening. <laughs> Check out Who's Right with Doug and Anthony. We got it. <laughs> Just days before an SUV carrying a family of eight plummeted from a cliff in Northern California. <laughs> this is something I can rally around, you know, because I am anti dead hooker. You, I am. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> if, if I, I like my hookers alive. <laughs> that sounds weird, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't want to edit this. If you want to edit this shit, then go ahead. But I there's just take out the shit that will get will get me fired. If I Whatever. were to if I were to say that word, that, that word. would be what our podcast would be known for. We've been doing this for seventy episodes. That'd be it. Our our we are racist, and you would be dragged right down with me. We no, are. I would be there fighting the power, man. <laughs> I would prove the critics wrong and and catch the jungle fever. From that logic, if you follow that out, I can make fun of. Of many handicapped people, all I want as long as I don't call them a certain word. Right. That's not, that's not the. <laughs> no, <right>. not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the lesson that I would teach my kids. <laughs> Just don't make fun of mentally handicapped people. <laughs> I think you pretty much got the gist of it. You're, you're a shitbag. <laughs> Check out Who's Right at Who's Right Podcast.com. I'm wrong, you're wrong. Everybody sing this song. Talk it on. So, the Who's Right podcast with Doug and Anthony. 
And there's almost not words to describe the show other than what they, how they describe it themselves. Simply say, we are two regular, uneducated chuckleheads with an opinion about everything. One of us is right, the other is wrong. Yeah, you tell us which is which. And they've, they've, I, to my understanding, the earlier episodes were much more they'd argue about shit. Now it's much more, they'll bring up some new stuff. Typically, Doug brings up new stuff. And, and they talk about it. And generally, they're on opposite sides of things. They kind of, not to like put it in political terms, but Doug is much more moderate liberal and Anthony is very conservative. Now, he's not like super crazy conservative or anything like that, but he is a he's a kind of person that will take a little more, you know, it, he'll take that side on things generally. At the same time, they're talking about issues, uh, issues like dead hookers, you know, and 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 and, and uh, the, the, you heard the clip. <laughs> I can't repeat some of the things that they say. It's some of the things that they discuss sometimes get pretty. They they get out there. They do. And I mean, they they did an um, an entire episode, almost entirely about gun control debate, and the goal of the show is is comedy. It's intended to be comedy, and sometimes they'll get where they'll just start fighting about an issue. And the gun control episode was one that where it was like that. They literally put a a disclaimer at the beginning and end of the show, saying this may very well be the last episode because they were just fighting the whole time, and. Doug didn't think it was funny. Anthony basically came at it like, I'm not trying to be, I don't try to be funny. I let the funny happen. Doug tries to be funny. <laughs> he tries to come at everything with an angle so that he can make, make it funny. Anthony just kind of is much more, I would say whimsical. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever described Anthony as whimsical, but he's much more let the funny happen. Do you do your thing and the funny will happen much kind of like what I do here. I don't force the funny. If the funny happens, I don't know how often it actually happens, but if the funny happens, it happens naturally. And they get this huge fight over this ep during the episode. And I love, they actually let it roll as they kept fighting. Even after the, sh the episode ended, there was probably another five minutes of them fighting about the episode after the episode. And it was like, man, y'all need, when I heard that, I was, I, I don't know these guys that well. I've reached out to them a little bit here and there. Mostly I've, I've like, I've talked shit to them on Twitter and things like this because, and again, not that I'm so much of a troll, but with who's right and like the brand X podcast. And that's how I discovered who's right was through the brand X podcast was because they would constantly be, even though they're like best friends really but they would constantly talk a lot of shit back and forth and so after hearing john on brand x talk about who's right so often i was like okay i gotta check these guys out what is it you know what is it about this show and i listened to him and like i get it and it's very much in that same style of of you know talking a lot of shit and talking news and discussing things in a very snarky sort of a comical way, except Brand X will take things that are much more mainstream news sort of things. And who's right? They might take something that's mainstream news, but they'll take something that's possibly even too extreme for me. They're probably they're ice in the face level weird shit, but they make it work. <laughs> but what's funny, and it's 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 interesting to say it's funny, but. The simple disparity in their voices is funny because Doug has a very deep, gravelly voice and, uh, and Anthony does not. He is much higher, much more, I don't know how to describe their voices, which is awful for somebody who's trying to get into voice work and who's been a podcaster for this long. I should be able to describe a voice. But 
safe to say one of them is very deep and gravelly and the other is much higher pitched and not squeaky, but up there. And just the disparity in their voices is mildly comical as they're having these disagreements. But it's kind of, and again, I'm going to say kind of funny. It's like funny. That's what the show is. It's a comedy show. You, even though they're talking about news stuff, it's meant to be funny. And even their disagreements, their arguments are, that's what, I mean, that's where it comes from. It's the, them arguing and them butting heads and yelling and screaming and fighting over, over stupid shit, over, you know, using the R word. That one was, that one was hilarious because it was a story about somebody saying, we need to get rid of the R word, which for those of you who aren't familiar is retarded. And fine, it's, it's insensitive. And that was where the, the clip about the not making fun of mentally disabled people, that's where that line came from. Well, they probably said retarded more times in that episode, even though when in context, they were saying the R word. Like, no, you can't use that word anymore. It's the R word. I was like, that's fucking retarded. <laughs> It's like, look, you can't call a retard a retard, <laughs> you know, things like this. They, they, you know, they've had where like they won't say the N word and they won't say the N word because it's like, Hey, if we use that word, then, you know, word's going to get out and that's all anybody's going to know. We're just those racist guys who used the N word and to the point where now they were reading rap lyrics in an episode recently and they, you know, in the the article, it was N asterisk, 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 blah, blah. And it's just turned the N word has become an asterisk. <laughs> and I think uh, the uh, F word for uh, homosexual has been turned into fasterisk. And there's there's a lot of, of, of asterisk words, which is <laughs> them trying to recall them trying to keep their their censoring. Not that funny that it's not a, a clean show by any means, but that they censor certain words <laughs> for, for sensitivity. Sensitivity. More of they censor certain words to make sure that Doug doesn't lose his job because there's people at work who listen to him. It's like, oh, there's that guy who said the N word. Fuck that guy. You're fired. Whatever. Uh, or when they try and do a bit, anytime they read an article, where their quotes, the the gag basically goes. Doug reads the article. Uh, Anthony has to basically voice the character that's being quoted, and his default characters for a, I don't even know. There was one point where I think the character's name was very Hispanic, and he defaulted to what could only be described as a pissed off Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Where he goes with some of the character, the voices he uses to represent people in news stories is just off the fucking walls. And then the fact that really they can't keep that bit straight. They cannot like Doug will start reading. Anthony will be off in La La Land. And like, Oh, Doug's reading. No, 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 no. And then Doug will stop because there's a quote and Anthony's supposed to read it. And he's like, are you going to read this fucking thing or not? <laughs> like, hey, this is your, that's your cue, asshole. <laughs> God damn it. We've only done this bit for 10 fucking episodes. You know, shit like that. <laughs> <You> know, whatever. <laughs> the, the fact that and you don't know, you really don't know is how much of it is an act. And I've said before, the kind of the wonder of podcasting is that you don't have to fake it. But when there are bits and it is intended to be comedy and things like that keep happening, you wonder how much of it is a bit and how much of it is real. How much of it is just, yeah, Anthony doesn't give a shit about doing the bit, so he's not paying attention. And how much is a, you know, no, the gag is going to be that you're never paying attention or the gag is that we're going to do the quote thing and you're always going to fuck it up. You know, you don't know. I don't get the impression that it's fake or forced or any of that, but it's just funny. And again, it's the fact that they sit there butting heads and I'm not one for toilet humor. 
I'm really not. If you've listened to the show any amount of time, I'm not one for toilet humor. Lots of profanity, fine. Toilet humor, not so much. Not my thing. In certain context, I will go there, but that's introduce me into a situation where toilet humor is the situation. I'll play along. But in my general sort of my thing, I don't use a lot of toilet humor personally. But they do. And it but it works within the the, the things, the discussions, the way they're talking about. But it's funny because it doesn't bug me. They're some of the most graphic, vulgar assholes I listen to. And I mean that in the best possible way. But it's it's funny that I guess because, you know, Irish Mexican sailor, there's not much that I actually am, I'm not going to be offended by shit. They're not going to say anything that's going to offend me. Which helps because I've apparently offended people on this show. Oh, well, you're not my target audience. And I'm sure during my segment for the live stream for The Cure, I probably offended a lot of people. I'm more so concerned about that group only because that's a bigger audience. It wasn't mine. All that aside... Oh, I, I don't, nothing they can say or do bugs me. And I, I find myself laughing out loud as they go through their their reactions to some stories is just gold. (laughs) There's no other way around it. The way they, the way they debate, big air quotes, debate topics, the way they approach news stories or the way they just talk shit about each other is Again, I've talked about when you've got friends that are real friends doing a show together and how much more natural just them having a conversation. You don't have to give them anything. They can just have a conversation and the natural uh, connection they have makes it good, makes it funny. That's what they that's what Doug and Anthony have. And they have that being vulgar sons of bitches. (laughs) That's it. They can be some vulgar head button, stubborn bastard sons of bitches. And it makes for a great fucking show. It does. I never thought I was going to be into it, but it's a good show really is. So if you are not easily offended and you are, listen, if you, if you heard the, the promo, you heard the clips that is a very accurate representation of the show. If you listen to that and you're like, you know what? I can dig this or I'm going to give this a listen. If you didn't hear the clip at the beginning of this segment and so I'll fuck this and turn it off. Check them out. Go to who's right podcast.com. Check them out. And as a little bonus, you know, sidebar, that's the bit about the show. Doug, Doug from who's right is much like myself. And Paul from Varmints, he's a nice guy asshole. You you listen to the show and you're like, man, he's a fucking asshole. You listen to me in certain respects. You know me personally. He's kind of an asshole. There are people that will say that about Paul. Paul butts heads with people all the time. He also avoids those situations. Paul, super nice guy. One of the sweetest guys out there. Doug, when the... Cancer diagnosis came through for Perry Johnson from uh, Hello Life and Pod Stuff. When that happened, Doug went to the guy from We Have Merch, where they get their their merchandise and stuff. He went to him. Doug is, I don't know if he's a, a graphic designer by trade or he's just damn good at it, but the guy makes good graphics. And he made a sticker and had a sticker made up for Perry. So if you go to wehavemerch.com, not only did he have a a hashtag, uh, fuck, uh, hello cancer WTF sticker, uh, hashtag we're with Perry, I believe that's what it says. I'm sorry if I'm getting this wrong, guys. Um, he also made a t-shirt, which I think I'm actually going to order with a stomach on it. So... Uh, I don't stomach cancer or we can't stomach cancer. Something along those lines. I don't have them in front of me. I'm sorry I'm fucking up the fucking shirts. But they're awesome. 
So if you go to wehavemerch.com and they may even have the links on the who's right.com website or who's right podcast.com. Um, and I'll throw the links. I think I'll throw the, the links for those up on the homepage here in the next couple of days. Cause I'm sure my main homepage notes are going to be late, but I'm going to throw those up on the odd dad out podcast.com as well. But basically all profits from the stickers and the t-shirt sales go directly to Perry and Lindsay Johnson and Doug did that on his own. You know, if I had the artistic skill or the resources to do the kind of thing, like, but when, you know, the news broke about Perry's cancer, Doug went and did that on his own. And he reached out to his merch guy and said, here, here's what I want to do for these guys. And they made it happen. They very quickly made it happen. So go to who's right podcast.com, go to, we have merch.com buy yourself the hello cancer WTF stickers, the, the stomach cancer t-shirt and support Perry and Lindsay Johnson and do your, what you can and, and help them fight this fucked up piece of shit. Goddamn son of a bitch asshole stomach cancer but that's going to do it for me this week thank you so much to mike jolitz from the big big show with mike jolitz and surprise mf.com you can catch all of the links to the past episodes show notes maybe some pictures along with the full recommended listening catalog at odddadoutpodcast.com you want to reach out to me, it's show at odddadoutpodcast.com, or you can always follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at odddadout. And if you are such a nice person that you want to give me some money for doing all this crazy shit I do, there's a little link up there. You can donate there. You can find links to the Hello Cancer WTF uh, GoFundMe. I will get the the stickers and the shirts up on the page soon so you can buy those. Or if you want to buy some of my merch, hell, it's all right there. Right there at the top. Click on the little merch tab because you're awesome. And until next week, I am Adam Higgins, the Odd Dead Out. Thank you and good night. Good night.